voice dictation. It's a crucial feature for some, a novelty for others, and some people don't even know it's built into their phone. But it's an important enough feature that Google, Microsoft, and Apple have each built a version of it into their platforms. So today, we're going to do an informal head-to-head -head comparison to see how they measure up. I'm Michael Fisher, this is Pocket Now, and this is Voice Dictation Showdown between iOS, Android, and Windows Phone. Now, we're not talking about virtual assistants like Google Now, Siri, or S Voice here. With this video, we're just comparing how the different platforms deal with translating voice input to text, like if you're dictating an email or a text message. For this test, we're using an early 2012 iPad running the latest version of iOS, a Google Nexus 7 running the latest version of Android Jelly Bean, and a Nokia Lumia 920 running the latest version of Windows Phone 8. All three are running on the same wireless network. Of the three, only Android's offering can run without a network connection. Both iOS and Windows Phone need connectivity for voice dictation to work. All three of these platforms feature a key toggle on the keyboard to activate voice dictation. Down here on Android, it is next to the space bar. It's also located next to the space bar on iOS. And on Windows Phone, once you enter a text field, the voice dictation button becomes illuminated down in the bottom row under the keyboard. So we've got three blank emails ready here. Let's just try and hit these devices with a common sentence and see how it goes. The Pocket Now Weekly podcast is the best podcast ever, I think. It often features Brandon, Anton, and me. This is a shameless plug. See how this goes. As you can see, oh, I'll go ahead and stop the dictation there, sorry. As you can see, Android dictates is the only one which dictates live. The other two devices need to talk to the network. And let's see how they did. First with Android. Oh, it's got some interesting capitalization on Pocket Now. For the record, the N is not capitalized the way we do it, but it's interesting that it recognized it as one word. I think it often features Brandon, Anton, and Maine. This is a shameless plug. Taylor's ghost, as you can see. Yes, indeed. All right. Well, that's fine. And what about this? An iOS. The Pocket Now Weekly podcast is the best podcast ever, I think. It often features Brandon, Anton, and me. This is a shameless plug. It was good, as you can see. Compared to Android, a much more accurate result from iOS. And on Windows Phone... The Pocket Now Weekly Podcast is the best podcast ever. I think it I think it often features Brandon, Anton, and me. This is a shameless plug. Pretty good. You get the idea with all three of these devices, but as you can see, not a lot going on in punctuation. These are just kind of solid blocks of text. So from a punctuation standpoint, these platforms all handle it relatively similarly. Windows, uh, Android, and iOS do not add any punctuation. Windows Phone tries to add a little bit of punctuation where it thinks it might be appropriate, putting a period at the end of that sentence there. So let's see what happens when we try to add some punctuation manually. The Pocket Now Weekly podcast is the best podcast ever, comma, I think, period. It often features Brandon, comma, Anton, comma, and me, period. This is a shameless plug, exclamation point. As you can see, Windows Phone opted not to let us finish, a point which I'm going to address in a second. But let's bring up Android here. The Pocket Now Weekly Finds the Best Card Ever, comma, I think, period. It doesn't get often, really. But there's the commas between Brandon, Anton, and me. And it didn't really get the end of the sentence there, but the exclamation point is present. How about iOS? Pocket Now Weekly Podcast is the best podcast ever, I think. It often features Brandon and me. This is a plug. Very nice. Exclamation point is present. So is the rest of it. And Windows Phone, not exactly bringing the heat with the punctuation, just putting in the words for commas. Kind of irritating. So since it is the punctuation problem child here, let's ask Windows Phone a question. It adds question marks in the simplest of scenarios, but fails with anything more complex. What do you want? 
it's added a question mark automatically there. But let's say we do this one. Wouldn't you rather go to the store? No question mark on the end of that very obvious sentence. So from a punctuation standpoint, Windows Phone gets points for trying to interpret it organically, but it fails in the execution. iOS and Android are much more useful for punctuation-laden sentences, even though inputting punctuation this way is pretty awkward. Still, it's nice to have the option. Now let's test hang time, or how long the app will allow you to wait in between phrases. We saw this with Windows Phone just a second ago, but uh, let's try a sentence here where we're thinking about what to say. Make sure to buy a Nexus 7, an iPad mini, and, oh, I don't know, an HP ZD8000. Maybe a less suitable example than the real-world example we just showed, but as you can see, Windows Phone, make sure to buy an extra 7, and I've had many, and I'll, I don't know, not the best translation there. Whereas Android even got the HP brand name correct for that very old computer I'm telling somebody to buy. And iOS, well, not quite as good at divining what I was trying to say, but it definitely waited for me to complete the sentence. So, as you can see, you better know what you want to say to Windows Phone before you say it. It has no patience for your dithering. Apple and iOS give you much longer listening times, comparatively. Finally, we want to see what happens when there's a lot of ambient noise around, like in an echoey room with water running and the microwave oven going and some stuff on the radio. It's noisy as heck in here. I sure wish I were in a quiet country home with only cats for company. Wait, that's not true at all. Android. Well, Android wants to curse. That's interesting. Fairly accurate. iOS says... Well, iOS has a really hard time dealing with any kind of background noise, apparently. And Windows Phone. Yeah, Windows Phone didn't wait for us to finish. I'm not surprised. Had enough of this? Me too. That's enough of that calamity. Of course, noise cancellation depends as much on your hardware's noise cancellation features as on the software, so of course your mileage will vary in that respect. Next, what we want to do is a quick context and syntax test with various forms of words in the same sentence. We're talking about there, there, your, your, things like that. So, whether the weather be cold or whether the weather be hot, we'll be together whatever the weather, whether we like it or not. Well, Android thought that maybe some of those weathers might be applicable in some circumstances. It didn't get them all right, but it definitely tried its best with that difficult tongue twister. What about iOS? iOS got the grammar perfectly on the weather weather test. And Windows Phone, which surprisingly let us finish. Windows Phone also scoring perfectly on that interpretive test. Let's try another. If you're going to bring your umbrella there, your clothes will be better protected than their clothes will. There's that first your, the second your, third your, and there. The only thing it got wrong was the a then and there confusion. And can we correct that? And yes, it gives us the option to correct it. Very good job, Android. How about iOS? Well, very nice. It didn't get clubs, and it didn't get there, but we can do the tap to autocorrect, and we can change it to then. That's very nice. Pretty good performance there. Not quite as nice, but acceptable with a few corrections and Windows Phone. Windows Phone also mistaking my them for, uh, then for a them, and we can very quickly do an autocorrect there, and also asking a question at the end. But uh, overall, not too bad. All these devices do know a little bit better than some humans 
about the importance of then, then, your, your, there, there, etc. And finally, we'd like to see what happens when I slur my words a bit, dropping the careful diction that some of you like and some detest. Uh, we'll also mix in a proper name again to mess things up. So first, with proper diction. Jaime Rivera hosts the Pocket Now Daily, a once-a-day program about technology you should watch. Well, let's see if Android got Jaime's name. It did not. Hi, Matt Rivera host the Pocket Now Daily, a once-a-day program about technology you should watch. All right, so not too bad. Jaime being a difficult name uh, to uh, pronounce, apparently, for voice dictation, but that's an easy fix. Aha, iOS, however, knows who Jaime Rivera is. Uh, no wonder it's his favorite platform. Host the Pocket Now Daily, a once-a-day program about technology you should watch. Very nice. And what about Windows Phone? <laughs> Windows Phone turning our friend Jaime into an Australian. Hi, mate. Rivera hosts the Pocket Now Daily. I wanted a program about technology you should watch. Okay. So, there that is. Let's see what happens when we put in a whole lot less effort. Jaime Rivera hosts the Pocket Now Daily, a once-a-day program about technology you should watch. Hi, Mara. There's a host to talk about daily. I wanted a program about technology you should watch. Obviously, less accuracy there as I slurred just a little bit and sounded like a dejected teenager. Jaime Rivera posts the Pocket Now Delea once a one today program. Okay, so iOS also losing some accuracy there, but not too much. And Windows Phone. <laughs> Hi, Myra. How is the packing now, Delia? Wanted a program about technology you should watch. All three platforms having some difficulty with that slurred speech. So the moral of the story... Speak clearly when you are dictating. So, as always, which platforms are best at a specific task depends on the task. Here, though, the differences are pretty stark. If you know what you want to say, and you can make it brief, Windows Phone is just okay. It doesn't get punctuation well at all, even though it tries harder at interpreting your punctuation without you having to come right out and say it. Uh, and it will cut you off if you stop for a breath, which is very frustrating. It's easily the most frustrating and, and least capable of the bunch, but it does do a couple things well. Android and iOS are the clear winners here. They're smart, adaptable, and useful, with very little functionality differences between them. The biggest difference is Android's ability to function off-network. Now, that won't matter for some, but if you're a frequent flyer who likes to annoy his seatmates by dictating long letters on an airplane, or if you like verbally composing email drafts while waiting for a train in the subway, Android is definitely the way to go. And in terms of raw ability, it comes out on top in this informal head-to-head. -head. That's going to do it for our informal voice dictation showdown. If you like the video, throw us a thumbs up here. If you have a comment, you want to leave some feedback, do so on the post at pocketnow.com. Follow us on Twitter. Pocket Now Tweet is the official account. You can follow me on Twitter. I'm at Captain Two Phones. That's Captain, the number two phones. And make sure and stay tuned for a lot more video and editorial content on iOS, Android, Windows Phone, every mobile device there is in the days and weeks ahead. Once again, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.